Okay. So now, we will be discussing types of civilian letter. Last time, na-discuss natin yung parts ng isang civilian letter. So, dito naman tayo. First is application letter. So, the main purpose of this is to persuade the prospective employer that the applicant is an outstanding candidate to be called in for an interview. Kasi, di ba? Uh, iba ito sa resume. Okay. Ang resume, kumbaga, andun yung listahan ng lahat ng mga experience mo, ng educational attainment, uh, ano ba ba? seminars attended, yung mga character references mo. Yung application letter ay yung cover niya. Yung cover letter. Kumbaga, nakaparagraph form. Letter nga siya eh. So, nakaparagraph form yung pagpapakilala mo sa sarili mo. So, I am Leslie Gisele Cuevo, a graduate of the Criminology at Angeles University Foundation, a registered criminologist. Choo, 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 choo. I have experience uh, field for this many years and I have tackled this position. Kumbaga, hindi nga, papakilala mo yung sarili mo. Okay. So, uh, yun yung application letter. So, types ng application letter is solicited application. Solicited. Hiningi. It is written based from an advertisement coming from a newspaper, radio, television, or internet. This may include the following information, attention getter, the position you seek, how you learned about it, your qualifications, how you can help in the growth of the company or organization, and request for an interview. So, again, pag sinabing solicited application, ipinost yung trabaho. Tapos na napag-alaman mo lang na may, may posting, kaya ka nag-apply. Kaya solicited, kasi hinihingi talaga nila. Okay. Unsolicited application, this is not based from an advertisement. This format is used when one is inquiring about a job in a firm or company, but uh, he is not sure if such particular position is advertised or available. In this situation, the job applied for should still be indicated. So, kabalik taran lang. Pero lang kasimple. Yung unsolicited application naman ay... Uh, hindi siya naka-advertise. Naglalagay ka nito kasi may gusto kang itanong tungkol doon sa trabaho or doon sa company. Okay, next is resume. It is a record of the personal information, uh, educational background, and work experiences of a person applying for a job. This accompanies the application letter or cover letter. Ito na nga, yung kumbaga, detailed na information, experience, educational attainment about you. And this reflects the professionalism of the applicant. So, types of resume. Chronological resume from the name itself. Chronological. Ibig sabihin, nakabase sa date. So, it is a structured resume in reference to the provide for educational background, work experiences, qualifications, and references. So, these are listed starting from the most recent. So, this type is more often used by applicants looking for work in a specific field. And then, we also have functional resume. This type of resume gives emphasis on the person's skills and Abilities. This is used for those applicants who have gaps in their work experiences or have mixed bag work history. And for those who are re-entering the workforce because of frequently changed jobs. Okay. Chronological resume, usually, ito ang ginagamit kapag kumbaga, maayos naman yung naging karir mo. For example, uh, sa akin na lang, yung dahil wala naman akong ibang naging trabaho maliban sa pagtuturo so pwede kong gamitin yan yung chronological na uh, type so yung pinakaunang work ko sa ganitong school tapos yung sumunod na work sa ganitong school so presently nasa AUF yung ganun walang gap and hindi rin ako pabago-bago ng trabaho but for those who have gaps 
in their resume. Ibig sabihin may mga panahon na hindi ka nagtrabaho. Meron, meron siyang one year na break o kaya six months na break na wal, nawawala doon sa uh, resume niya. Ibig sabihin, nagpahinga siya. Or, paiba-iba ka ng trabaho. For example, nag-cashier ka, tapos na call center agent ka, tapos nag-online English teacher ka, tapos nag-virtual assistant ka. Kung baga, magkakaiba sila. Hindi sila directly related. So, you can use a functional resume para ma- ma-highlight kung ano ba talaga yung mga kakayahan mo, ano ba talaga yung mga katangian mo na tingin mong magugustuhan o kailangan ng employer kung sa- na ina-applyan mo. Okay. Number three is letter of invitation. The letter is an invitation for the presence of a person. Obvious naman, letter of invitation nga. Ibig sabihin, may tao kang gustong papuntahin doon sa lugar nyo. May ini-invite ka with the main purpose of inviting him to a particular event or celebration. This is also to ensure that the invited guest is going to attend. Kasi kapag verbal lang, baka makalimutan niya at napaka-informal kasi kapag ganon. Pero kapag may nareceive ka kasing le- letter talaga, letter of invitation, kumbaga ang dating, ah, seryoso tong bagay na to. Kaya sisiguraduhin ko na mailagay to sa schedule ko. Okay. Um, the present and future tenses are used. The present tense gives information about the said event and the future tense assures that the invited person will attend. Okay. Uh, number four, letter of inquiry. This is a letter seeking information about people, services, products, catalogs, prices, and policies. The following should be stated in the letter, the purpose of the inquiry, the questions the writer wants to ask, and the reasons for inquiring. Kaya, Letter of inquiry, uh, nag-message ka sa school. Uh, I would like to know kung magkano ang tuition fee sa ganitong program. Uh, tumatanggap ba kayo ng student aids? Uh, tumatanggap ba kayo ng installment? Meron ba kayong installment plan sa pagbabayad ng tuition? And so on. So yun, letter of inquiry yun. Okay. And then, letter of reply. This letter is an answer or the reply of an inquiry about anything. This also means for the writer to express his appreciation on the interest of the sender about his queries on a particular goods, merchandise, or service, the details of the information requested, and other necessary information and enclosures are also included. So, kung ano lang yung reply mo doon sa letter of inquiry, yun na yung letter of reply. Okay. Letter of order. This is written to place an order. This is also known as PO or purchase order. Siguro yung mga nagbibusiness dyan, familiar kayo dito. Which aims to provide a detailed instruction in an order. This includes the following necessary information about the goods being ordered, complete description, quality, catalog, number, brand, size, price, color, and other relevant data. So anything you could think of na patungkol doon sa product mo or doon sa service mo, kailangan mailagay siya dito sa letter order. Other information are also included such as complete name and address, time of shipment, manner of shipment, and mode of shipment. <clears throat> Number seven, letter of complaint. So this letter is written regarding grievances about goods or services. This explains the circumstances and details of the complaints with corresponding suggestions for possible solutions. So kapag meron kang problem sa isang good, sa isang service, o sa isang tao, kahit na tao, pwede rin. Uh, you should write a letter of complaint. Hindi yung basta-basta ka lang o kung saan-saan ka lang nag If you want to make it formal, you have to make a letter of complaint. Kasi dito, uh, mas malaki ang chance na maa-address yung grievance mo o yung pinagdadaanan mo. 
okay din na doon sa letter of complaint na gagawin mo ay ilagay mo na kung ano yung tingin mong mas makakabuting gawin, yung tingin mong magandang solusyon. And then, number eight, letter of adjustment. Written in response to the complaint letter that has been received from an individual person or business. So somehow, this is uh, some type of letter of reply. Yung letter of adjustment, specific lang siya na sinasagot yung complaint. The main purpose of this letter is to resolve the stated grievances. So pagka-receive mo ng complaint, ang ibibigay mo, letter of adjustment. Okay.